Hello, I'm here in the Salish Sea, Pacific Northwest, and it's Monday with Mark. Hey, Joe, thanks for helping me out of the suit. <laughs> Love what you do here. Tell us about the CDOC program and the research and work that you do to help animals. So CDOC is a program out of the Wildlife Health Center, One Health Institute at the School of Veterinary Medicine. And our focus is, is this, it's the Salish Sea. So this giant 17,000 square kilometer inland sea. So what's really interesting, Joe, is that your work started with kind of the iconic species here of killer whales, but now it's evolved to a much larger amount of work. So if we want to save killer whales in, in this specific population, we have to save salmon. And then we have to save what salmon eat. So we have to save the forage fish, we have to save the plankton. So what you start to realize is that it's this giant mosaic and we need, really need to be thinking about the whole ecosystem because that's what's gonna ultimately benefit killer whales, people, and then all of the different parts that are connected to that ecosystem. One of the things I love about how creative you've become in working with the health of animals in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, how, how do you do that? I think, okay, if we wanna listen to the breath cycle, what if we can take one of those directional microphone that they use on a movie set? Yep. So we can hear them come up, breathe out, and then breathe in again, and then we can characterize the noises right. that we hear. So now we're learning, oh, what if we fly a drone in and get that breath sample? So we're always thinking, what are ways that we can do something without asking too much of the wild animal? When I think about our work with marine environment and the important things that we do to help conservation, it goes way beyond our work here in North America. And I wanted to introduce you to Marcella Arhart, who is a wildlife veterinarian who usually spends her time in South America. What does a wildlife veterinarian do with whales in the middle of the Pacific Ocean? So we try to understand their exposure to pathogens, their exposure to contaminants in the oceans, entanglements and fishing gear, and how things like climate change are affecting their food sources. So if a whale died anywhere along the coast there, yes. you can determine from uh, toxins that are in the tissues or the animal's condition and how well it was eating and some of the diseases that travel up and down the Pacific coast, right? We're uh, being uh, affected by avian influenza outbreaks um, all along the coast of the Pacific, but also the Atlantic now. It's not just birds, right? So here we call it avian influenza, but it's a virus that affects mammals also. Yes, and that is critical, especially since we're seeing this adaptation of a bird virus into potentially a mammal adapted right. virus. So during this segment, we've met Dr. Joe Gatos up in Washington State with his program with CDOC. We've gone all the way down to Argentina in South America with Dr. Marcy Earhart. And now I thought we'd fill in the gap. And here we are in California, and we're talking about the work that we do with the marine environment here with the Oiled Wildlife Care Network. And I'm here with Dr. Lorraine Barbosa, who helped manage that program. So we are responsible for the proactive capture and care of all oil-affected wildlife in the state of California. If I remember correctly, you're able to go via land, via sea, via air, to investigate how big the oil spill is and what animals might be affected. We have 1,600 trained responders in our network, and then people who have all of this knowledge about caring for them once we have them. I've been amazed at how often you are immediately having to help animals and how commonly you're able to clean them up, rehab them, and set them back to the wild. So that's awesome. Many of the folks we've been talking to as part of this episode are part of the Karen C. Dreher Wildlife Health Center. And I'm here today with Dr. Kirsten Gillardi, director of the Wildlife Health Center. Tell me a little bit about how we got started. I met individuals up in Washington State who were addressing the problem of abandoned, lost, and discarded fishing gear in the ocean. You're talking about tons of nets trapping fish, birds, otters, and seals. Exactly. And it's not just here in California, it's worldwide. There's so much plastic going into the ocean, and that plastic is consumed by animals in the ocean and by us. The plastics kind of almost act like a sponge and grab onto those chemicals and bring them into human and animal bodies. That's where a lot of the research is happening. Thanks for saving our critters. 